Okay, welcome back. I had a little problem on the recording on the last one, so here's a new video. Um, what I'd like to address about this number three is notice that you have uh, multiple means. So to find the team mean, you're comparing the team mean with this number, which was their best time. So you're going to be adding those means. Uh, also recall that with standard deviations, you need to do standard deviation squared, change them into variance. So you're going to have a sum of four squared numbers to find the standard deviation, then square root that. Uh, and that's all I'll say about that. Make sure you answer part A and part B. On to the next question. Let's see, for number four, let's take time to read this. So notice both of these follow a normal model. It's always important to notice that. You have a mean and standard deviation of uh, packing and of boxing. So what's the probability that packing two consecutive systems takes over 20 minutes? Now I think when I say packing here, what I probably should have said I don't know. I think we'll go with it. Probability that packing two systems takes over 20 minutes. Notice there's two systems. So to pack one is nine minutes, and to pack a second one is another nine minutes. So we'd expect 18 minutes. And you have to deal with the 1.5 standard deviation, and you're going to have a normal model. Part B, what percentage of stereos take longer to pack than to box? So we need to compare packing, which is nine, with boxing, which is six. So typically, packing, so this is for part B, just a couple clues on part B. Packing is nine, boxing is six, so typically it's three minutes longer to pack. We'd like to know wherever the zero is, what percentage take longer to pack than to box? Well, we would guess most of them take longer to pack because it takes nine minutes to pack and six minutes to box. But at some point, it equals zero. So all of these would take longer to pack than to box. So we need to find the standard deviation and then find a probability. So you could try that. You could pause this video and work on that. Or you can keep listening to this video and then go back and work on number four. I want to pause the video to read number five. So on this one, you have 30 days, and the mean is given as 1.3 parking tickets per month. You have 18 trucks. So uh, if we're assuming that the trucks are independent of each other, seems like a fair assumption, but I guess we could always discuss that. You have 18 trucks, 1.3, so to find the mean over a 30-day month for these 18 trucks, 18 times 1.3 would be your mean, and you could find the standard deviation as well. I'm not going to say too much more about that. Uh, number six is a nice little review. I think this is helpful for students to review stuff from yesterday and the 6.1 lesson. Here you're given the mean of some random variable x and the standard deviation. Here you're given the mean of some random variable y and its standard deviation. So just like to review if you have a random variable and you subtract 20, subtraction, does that change the mean? Does that change standard deviation? Uh, this one you're multiplying by a half and then adding 10. Does multiplying and adding change the mean and standard deviation? And um, you know, then we're adding subtracting, be careful with subtracting, and then we're adding two of the same, so two of those 90s. We're going to add to get a new mean of 180, for instance. Um, so you could try those. Let's look on the next page. Uh, the next page is kind of new material. If you're in pre-calculus, I'm sure you talked about binomial probabilities. Maybe even in Algebra 2, binomial probabilities were talked about. I believe they were. 
So here's a nice little uh, acronym, BINS, to determine if something is a binomial probability or a binomial setting. So you could read those four things that you're looking for. I gave you an example right here with the solution, how to think about if this example is a binomial setting, which it is. Here on number seven, you're going to be answering some questions. Determine if it's a binomial setting or not, yes or no. If it's a yes, then identify bins. If it's a no, then just pick which one of those, B, I, N, or S, is the problem case. Uh, and then number eight, I'm trying to get you to understand the reasoning why we use the binomial theorem. So you can answer question A and question B with what you know about probability from chapter five. No special formulas there. However, part C, you will need uh, something different, the binomial theorem, which I kind of uh, try to work through with this discussion, the binomial theorem. So you could answer those. Well, I would like to stop my recording there. It is getting late in the evening tide, and I want you to have as much time in class that you can work through this packet. So again, the first couple pages are using um, the idea of combining means and standard deviations for random variables. And these last four or five pages are about the binomial theorem, which hopefully you uh, remember seeing before in a previous math class. Uh, if you have questions from this packet, please uh, work with your neighbor on it. I do want you to finish the packet. Uh, if you finish early, you can begin on the homework. And I will uh, answer questions you have from this packet tomorrow in class. We also have a lesson in class tomorrow. But I hope you enjoyed this video.